in alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'u innahu innahu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudillillahu wa may yudlil fala hadiyalah alhamdulillah indeed all praise is due to allah we praise him and we seek his help and forgiveness we seek refuge in allah from our souls evils and our wrongdoings he whom allah guides no one can misguide and he whom he misguides no one can guide assalamu alaikum ladies jazakallah khairan for joining me this evening my name is farah halabi and i'm a transformational life coach and tonight i shall be leading the session for the amazing sisters seeking salam now if it's anyone's first time i believe it's sister rudy's first time uh, who was recommended to us by her sister-in-law your sister-in-law mashallah has amazing taste so welcome um these sessions we started and um, for any of those for any of you who don't know about sister seeking salam well first of all where have you been this last year and a half um subhanallah we started these sessions there were 12 of us coaches roughly who um decided at the very very beginning of lockdown in march of last year when when everything changed just a little bit um subhanallah and we decided to do daily sessions to offer a place of solace a place of a place of safety just a space to be with one another when we couldn't be with those who we wanted to be with um, those who we love our families and um, the people that we wanted to be with in our everyday lives when we couldn't be with them in person sister seeking salam um came together to provide a little piece of salam a little piece of peace for us in a seemingly unpeaceful or quite turbulent time now as we know we're out of lockdown um but the um the big c word the coronavirus is um is still around and throughout the last year and a half sister seeking salam has well we've we've adapted to to what we feel the needs of our um our amazing audience is so we have re started our sessions and although they're not daily they will be twice weekly on a tuesday and a sunday and each of us coaches will lead the session now i don't know if you've drawn the short straw <laughs> but you've got me subhanallah and again for any of those who know me i am uh i love a waffle but inshallah what i've got to speak about this evening um i hope will resonate with you now i'm based in the uk um i'm not sure where everyone here is based uh, let's have a little look i know heber's based in the uk but well, sorry you my answer just put a thumbs up if you're if you're my answer i know i know you're based in the uk um but alhamdulillah so for any of us in the uk i titled this um session expectations but I love a bit of illustration so I decided to speak about what was quite prevalent and what was going on for me um, this week and decided to call this this session or to talk about petrol purpose and priorities now you might think what is she on about now what's she going on about well for those of us in the UK um the last week and a half maybe possibly this time last week or maybe just before we um we had a bit of a bit of crisis i don't know where you live but where i in my town um we couldn't get fuel for well for a little while for love nor money and when the petrol stations were refueled the queues were out of the uh out of the well they were very very long and people in the queues let's just say that their behavior um was very telling of the situation we are in right now so in the vein of expectations let's let's rewind to when we first started these sessions and who would have thought that in march of last year that the world as we know it would have changed in the way that it did on march the 22nd when in, in england in the uk we officially went into lockdown if you think about i don't know march the 2nd or february the 22nd or the 1st of january 
2020. Did were any of you worried about a virus taking over the world? Were any of you worried about having to work from home or school from home? That was an interesting one. Homeschooling children, that was Pamela. Yeah, that was interesting. But did you worry about having to navigate a time where you could not see, you could not be around those you love dearly, that your homes would become your workplace, your education site, the school for your heart, for your children, the workplace for you if you're working from home, your the way the place that you socialised. Um, the place that you ate, slept, showered, I hope, and lived. And that our homes actually became our masjids because the mosques were closed. So did any of us see that coming? Or were all of us just toddling around in our lives with the expectation that things were the way that they were and that's how they were going to stay? and that everyone was just trying to do the best that they could with, you know, what was going on. And it led me to thinking that it was the biggest wake up call, I guess, certainly in my lifetime, that it seemed to be that I was part of this thing, this, this test, this, um, this circumstance that affected not just me, not just my family, not just my community, but the people of the time that I'm living in, my generation, my, my peers, my brothers and sisters in humanity all over the world. And for, for those of you who have grandparents that lived through wars, the, again, as we're in the UK, or for most of us that are in the UK, a point of reference perhaps for our, for our grandparents or the generation of grandparents in this country would have been First World War, Second World War maybe, going after, uh, after that, other wars. But the coronavirus, the pandemic, certainly seems to be the, the test so far that has, um, that has peaked on the the things that happened in my fit in my lifetime it's one of those things that I can I, that I imagine telling my grandchildren about um inshallah whenever I have grandchildren my children are still very small so I'm not I'm not foreseeing any grandchildren um very soon but one of those things I think I can you know all my brand, grandkids with oh do you remember in my day so when when I talk about expectations and the pandemic is one of those things where it kind of it threw that expectation, blew that out of the water. How soon we get back into the way things roll. Like it was only 18 months ago that we were in lockdown. But I'm not, I don't know about you ladies, but it seems that as soon as Boris Johnson, mate, I like him, um, decided to effectively bring an end to the restrictions and pretty much left us to our own devices with regards to how we navigate this pandemic, that although, yes, the pandemic is still around, it's almost as if life has gone back to a, I don't know, quote unquote, back to normal or however normal was before, if there ever was a normal. And there are a few things that have happened in the last couple of weeks that I feel are a big kind of you know, tap on the shoulder, like, hold on a minute, love. You're swaying back into that, thinking that things are just going to be the way that they are. And it reminded me very clearly of the the premise that we live by, that we plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. How many times have you set out to do something in your day and you get to the end of the day and you think, I didn't actually get a chance to do that, but something else has happened, like you've done something else. And how many times do you do you set out in your day thinking it will go a certain way and other stuff that you didn't even imagine would have happened has happened. And I'm drawn to thinking about two things quite recently that have jolted me into a sense of, you know, there's still the unexpected, but you're falling back into that, you know, same old. And one is the petrol crisis, because, again, just before 
everyone was on panic mode with regards to fuel. I didn't have the expectation. I didn't worry. Sorry, I didn't have the worry and it wasn't on my mind that I might need to you know, fill up my tank because there might be a petrol crisis. There might be a petrol shortage. I was under the assumption, the expectation, if you like, that I could just toddle off to the petrol station, fill up my tank, you know, just something that I've done whilst on the phone. Well, you're not supposed to use the phone at the petrol station, but, you know, just picking up a couple of bits at the, um, at the petrol station shop and going along my merry way. And my Facebook feed, my WhatsApp groups, my um, local, um, I've got a WhatsApp group for my road and it was just my WhatsApp was pinging off all over the place with people asking where they could get petrol because they had either, you know, tried to try to just get petrol ordinarily and either the petrol stations had run out or the queues were like literally miles long and people were getting quite het up because the reality of the situation you know, reduced fuel, whichever conspiracy theory you want to, you know, want to buy into, whether there was actually a shortage or whether, you know, Boris Johnson telling to it, telling everyone don't panic and then thinking, well, hold on a minute, if you tell us not to panic, what are people going to think? They're going to panic. You know, whichever way you look at it, you know, it's, um, I, I just wasn't under the, I, I just thought I'd be able to get, you know, some petrol. And again, like I said, the WhatsApp messages were just pinging because people were worried. People were literally, you know, some people couldn't get to work. Some people were worried about how to do school run. And again, when the reality of the situation does not meet your expectation, the bit in between is overwhelm, frustration, stress, anger even, and just this sense of it shouldn't be like that. It should be that I can go and get petrol. And this new reality right now that says that I can't or that that's an issue, I can't quite, you know, marry those two together. There's a big space between what I think should happen, my expectation, and what's really going on, the reality. Now, again, for those who know me, you'll know that I love an analogy. And when we first started speaking, when we first started doing these sessions, we used to love the gardening analogy. But the petrol thing got me to thinking about, about fuel. And I'll come back to that in just a tick. So I've just realised that the other thing, the other circumstance, if you like, that again jolted me out of same old thinking was, I think it was last Monday, the world stopped spinning for six hours. Well, it didn't really stop spinning, obviously, you know, well, it did stop spinning, you know, the world was still spinning. But social media sites, WhatsApp, Facebook and um, Instagram were down. Now, previous to that, I wasn't thinking, oh, I must make sure I post whatever it is I need to post or I need to check some profiles or I do um, whatever it is I need to do because I do use Facebook and Instagram to to serve my um to serve my clients, to serve my audience on on there, with with um, well, I I I, I think it's quite <laughs> beneficial. But I do use the medium of Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook. And last Monday, I didn't I didn't expect those that forum to close down. And I remember thinking um, I couldn't send a message on WhatsApp. Um, it kept on. Uh, trying to connect. I thought it was a Wi-Fi problem. So I rejected my Wi-Fi, tried to reboot it, was trying to reconnect and it wouldn't work. So I just thought, oh, do you know what? Stuff this. I can't, I can't be dealing with this. And so I turned off the computer, um, left my phone on the side, went and had a lovely cup of tea with my husband, uh, read a book with the kids. And subhanAllah, it wasn't a biggie. But for a lot of people whose lives are literally scrolling through the social media sites, Instagram and Facebook, for the people who rely on um, WhatsApp to communicate, for them, their world, their social media world had stopped. And again, the expectation was that they would be able to send a message. They would, a they would be able, or they should have been able to have liked a meme or posted about something or shared a video or 
done whatever it is that they usually do. But the reality was, no, they couldn't. So what do you do when the reality does not meet your expectation, doesn't meet the it should be like this or it shouldn't be like this in your mind? Where do you go from there? Is it the overwhelm, the anger, the frustration? Or do you do something else? Do you get creative? And for a lot of people who aren't social media, you know, the world kept spinning quite happily for them. For those who maybe realise, actually, hold on, this is a big, again, it's another sign. It's, I'm, you know, I'm going around, we plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners. And there is no, there are no coincidences. There is nothing that just happens for no reason. There are opportunities to learn, to grow, to see something different if we open our hearts and our minds to see it. So going on from that, first of all, I'd like to ask, was anyone here, and just pop a thumbs up or a or a yes in the comments or a no even in the comments, was anyone, has anyone here been affected in whichever way by the petrol crisis or by social media sites, the um, Facebook are going down last week for those couple of hours. Did it affect anyone here? Was anyone bothered about it? Did anyone think, you know, oh, it's a bit rubbish in it? Or am I talking to people who, who, who have lives that they run in real time rather than on social media? I hope I haven't sent you all to sleep because <laughs> no one said anything. But I'll just I'll just carry on. Um, so coming on from Subhanallah. Um, ah, Sister Richie says, I actually really appreciated the silence. Having no WhatsApp was good. Subhanallah, no WhatsApp or WhatsApp was neutral. How you felt about it, how you approached it, the lens through which you saw it is your experience, Subhanallah. Um, some Sister Summer says Ahamza was quite resilient to both. Mashallah. And Abby Daisy, because oh, you managed to get petrol the day before. Sorted. Uh, Sister Aunt says, not a social media person, so I wouldn't know, but it was funny to see others dying. <laughs> yep. Um, for for a lot of people that that live lives or live their life through social media, it was definitely another wake-up call. And these are all reminders. They're all, you know, they're all um they're all lessons. Everything is a lesson. Everything is an opportunity to take a pause, to to really check in with that expectation reality and how congruent those two are. And subhanAllah, if your hearts and your mind and your eyes, even your heart's eyes are open to it, you'll see. But if they're not, then you're going to be pressing that refresh button or tapping your phone, you know, a million times trying to connect trying to connect to what i have no idea but trying to stop the or trying to bridge the gap between what you want what you expect to be happening to what is actually happening now like i said i love an analogy and so the petrol the petrol thing it really got me to thinking i was discussing this with a client of mine um last week and like I said, on the WhatsApp groups that I'm on and also the local Facebook groups are, that I'm on, um, SubhanAllah, there is such, again, Facebook, social media, neutral, how we use it, what we do with it, how we feel about it, what our perception is of it, you know, will we'll paint our experience of it. And SubhanAllah, the local Facebook groups that, are, that, um, that I have were really, really helpful in as much as they were putting up which petrol stations had fuel, what type of fuel, the queue times, um, and helping, you know, helping people out. And subhanAllah, there was a real sense of community on that and my WhatsApp feed. So having that go down, actually, you know, if, if something had happened, if the petrol prices had happened and the WhatsApp had gone down at the same time, I guess, what would we have done? Well, we would have, to, we would have had to have got creative. I guess people would actually have to knock on their doors, you know, their neighbours' doors and speak to people. But anyway, I digress. But the petrol crisis, it really got me to thinking about us as cars. Um, some of the messages were, I've only got 
10 miles left before I run out. I've only got X amount of gallons before, before um, you know, I'm going to have to leave my car by the side. I need to get to work. I need to get my kids to various places. I need to take my parents to hospital appointments. I need to do X, Y, Z. And people were putting forward where they needed to go and how many miles on their tank their cars were saying that they had left to run before it was Kaputsville. And when we think about our cars, in I don't know if everyone on here drives, but um, you would never, or I don't know, would you? Well, I, I'll, I'll talk about myself. I would never drive on empty. I would know generally that my, you know, that the, uh, the fuel gauge, when it's getting to just before the little red zone, even like gets to a quarter of a tank, I'm thinking, okay, note to self, need to um, need to fill up and I've got it all set so I know how many miles to the tank I get and you know how what speed I should be going to um for, for it to be the most fuel efficient and you know I'm not I'm not a car techie by any means but I, I just have that as 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 a kind of um a lens just at the back of my mind through which when I get in the car it's it's like checking your mirrors I, I will check the fuel and you know, I know that when it gets to a certain point, just before the red, just before the light goes on to say, it's time to, you know, it's time to ch check on the, um, the fuel, it's time to fill up, that I would, I would never let my car, you know, I'd never drive on empty, I'd keep an eye on how many miles I've got left, but do we do that for ourselves? Now, there are only women in this in this group and if you are a, a, a wife a mother um someone who runs her own company someone who works um someone who does anything within the community someone who has a role someone who does something in life whatever that may be in whichever capacity that may be do we know how many miles we've got to go before our tank is empty do we go around worrying or do we have that on our minds? Do we have that? Is it on our remit of things to think about that, you know, we're getting to okay, 20 miles left on the uh, left on the clock before we need to refuel, before we need to conk out? Do we ever do that for ourselves? And it really got me to thinking about the filling our cups. But in this case, do we fill our tanks? And if you know if we've got a full tank or if we've filled up our tanks we're not running on fumes you know we will run efficiently we will we will you know we will get where we need to be you know we won't have to limp it or you know um just keep praying that that we'll get somewhere because we're almost out of fuel we'll just we'll just live life we'll just do whatever it is that we do in life we'll experience it we'll just you know crack on with our daily um daily whatever we've got going on but also with our cars we know specifically what fuel it takes you wouldn't put diesel in a petrol car or petrol in a diesel car unless by accident and even then you know it'd be a bit of a it'd be a bit of a nightmare but well, i say nightmare it wouldn't be great but you know it's easily done but we even you know we even attend to the correct fuel that we put in our cars we're very mindful of that there's little reminders as soon as you open your petrol cap it will have diesel or petrol and if it doesn't have anything, then you pretty much know that it's a you know petrol. But if it's a diesel, it will actually state diesel. And so we'll put we'll be mindful of of you know we'll, we'll it will be on our minds to put in the correct fuel. Now, if you're really like extra, then you'll be you might you might add that. Oh my goodness, I can't remember what it's called, but I've got a vague recollection of something called Red X or something or other. But it's um it's almost like um another liquid that you pop into your tank when you fill it up that enhances the 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 fuel consumption enhances the engine um how it works as you know as you can tell i'm not carry at all so i don't know the actual language but you know it's it's like an additional supplement it's like vitamins for your car you know you could even put that in there when it comes to your car we have yearly mot's it's a stipulation, it's it's a law that you have to have an MOT for your car that states to all who will read that certificate that your car is roadworthy, that it is safe and that it is good to go. In the interim, you have servicing for your car. 
you know, you should apparently, I think it's service, it should be service every year and you might have even like full service, half service. But again, it's all about nourishing, nurturing your vehicle to help it run at an optimum level, you know, to help it run smoothly. And that's for a car. You know, that's for metal and pistons and, you know, tyres and, you know, it might have comfy seats. You might have those lovely heated seats, but whatever it is, but it's for a car. Do we do that for ourselves? Do we have a yearly MOT? Do we think, oh, it's that time of year, need to kind of, you know, get ourselves healthy, get ourselves life worthy, get ourselves taxed, get ourselves, you know, looking after ourselves, making sure that we run at our optimum, making sure that we are um, fuel efficient, making sure that we are just, you know, comfortable in what we do and really doing it well. Do we have, do you ever give yourself a life MOT? And with our servicing, I guess for human beings, it might be self-care. It might be things like rest. It might be things like eating the right foods. It might be things like taking the correct supplements. It might be things like saying no to people when you feel that, you know, you need a bit of a rest. Self-care. If we were to see that as soul care, would you look after yourself? Would you nourish yourself? Would you nurture yourself in a completely different way? SubhanAllah. <laughs> Sister Shabani says, taking supplements out. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And when we think about how it is that we nourish ourselves, now, as human beings, you know, a car, they come in certain makes, certain models, having a man, and they have a manual that helps you know the ins and outs of that car. So if you've got, I don't know, a, um, show my age now, but like a, I don't know, Ford Fiesta, let's just say, I don't even know if they make Fiestas anymore. Um, but you've got a Ford Fiesta and it's a certain year, it comes with a manual. If the light comes on, if a certain light comes on in the dashboard, you would go to that manual, you would look in the index, you would correlate the, um, the sign on the dashboard to the, the manual, finding out what, what it means, um, troubleshooting it, and it will give you how to attend to that issue. Because that light's come on for a reason. It's telling you there is something that you need to attend to here. And you know, you go off and you sort it out, you either take it to the mechanic or you, I don't know, take it to whoever. Um, but you get it sorted out because there is something that's telling you that this is, you know, it needs attending to, but you go to the manual, you go to the, you know, manufacturer's manual, the, the, the company that built that car specifically, that make and that model, that knows what those specific signs and lights are. Now, when it comes to us, we have a manufacturer's manual. We have a guide. We have something that we can check in on that will tell us what is going on for us. We don't have a dashboard. Um, we're not robots. We don't have, we're not cars. We don't have, um, you know, something that will light up if there is something that we need attending to. But we have our thinking. We have our bodies we have our selves and the signs are there if our eyes and our hearts are open to seeing them if you've got a headache that headache is telling you that there is something that you need to attend to now you can pop a couple of paracetamol headache's gone it's dimmed the light it's you know it's switched off the light but the issue the cause of that headache still hasn't been attended to now that headache might come back bit harder, a bit more painful. Again, maybe you take um, stronger um, painkillers. Dull that, dull that sign, turn that light off. Again, still haven't attended to the problem or the issue. You might get a migraine or you might get a pain somewhere else or you might start feeling really tired and you don't realise that the two are connected but there are signs, they might not be 
all illuminated, but there are signs for those who see them. Now, the way in which we can keep ourselves ticking over, giving ourselves an MOT, giving ourselves, you know, regular servicing, regular supplements, regular nourishing for our bodies is food. For our physical being, it's, it's what we put on to, into ourselves, quite literally, how we fuel ourselves. Now, we can fuel ourselves with petrol if we're diesel running, like, you know, you could drink whatever, you could drink caffeine all day, or you could drink fizzy drinks or whatever it is. And that will, you know, it will give you something. But if you looked at yourself as a, I don't know, as a system that required the best of what you can give it for it to, operate at its optimum you know you'd be having zum zum water or you know mineral water or you know sparkling water from the himalayan mountains you know that has been piped by nuns you'd have the best of the best wouldn't you you would eat um all the great stuff that's organic or you know that's good for your system you know there are dietitians out there that can tell you what your body um is has a top intolerance for keeping away from there if you've got gluten tolerances you know but you would if you were to view your body as this mechanism that you require to successfully navigate life you would treat it like you know like your car you'd want to get it optimally running you'd want to get it excuse me you'd really want to get it running in the most efficient way so if that's for our bodies you know just having a nice dinner that is healthy rather than junk food that's what we can do for our bodies but the servicing and the mot that we can do for the other element that makes us human because as human beings we are we work in synchronicity of three elements if you like we have our physiology our bodies we have our psychology which is the ability to think the ability to make decisions the ability to um, to be aware of, of what's going on, the ability to make choices. You ladies didn't accidentally trip over and, you know, your Zoom came on and then suddenly you're on this call. For whatever reasons, you chose to be here this evening. There are no coincidences. It was completely meant to be. And you thought about it you know, you typed in the Zoom link or you clicked on the link on the WhatsApp message, but you made a choice. I'm hoping no one's here with a gun, you know, being held to the, their heads. I'm hoping that that everyone is here of their own free will. But there was a decision that you ladies made to be here. That's our psychology. That's our way of, of thinking about the world, about making, you know, how we experience the world, how we experience what's going on around us. And then there's our spirituality which is that, that bit that differentiates us from any of the other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we nurture, service, MOT, all of those elements, we can live the most optimum life. For us, a lot, for, our, um, for our physicality, it's like I said, with the food and the nutrients, but for our spirituality, regular servicing, regular in-touch moments, the five salahs, they are a... They are an opportunity to spiritually recharge, to spiritually service and um, nurture our the spiritual, spiritual side of ourselves. But the Salah is a beautiful example of how it is a servicing for our spiritual, psychological and physiological well-being. We have the physical elements of the Salah the ruku, the sujood, the, uh, the sajda. And we have that psychological um, nurturing because we are told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am as my servant thinks of me. When we're reciting our du'as, we are recalling those du'as, we are recalling those surahs, we are recalling the words that we say to our minds. We're thinking, we're connecting. And with the spiritual essence, you know, the khushu, the the feeling that you get when you're in that state. SubhanAllah, I can't think of any other better way of servicing or MOTing ourselves in the way that we are doing based on the information from the manufacturer's manual, which is the Quran and the which is the Quran. How better 
to know what's going on for us, how we can, you know, attend to the issues that come up in life than the creator who created us, the manufacturer who, who, who made us. And if there are, you know, there are signs and there are answers in the Quran, which is a shifa for not only our spirituality, but our physiology and our psychology as well. Now, I have waffled on an awful lot. I hope I haven't sent anyone to sleep yet. But what, um, what does that bring up for you ladies? So I'd love to open it up. And for anyone who's a little bit concerned, this, um, this session is being recorded and it will go out on our YouTube um, channel, but there are no cameras on, so no one will see. And it will just have the um, Sisters Seeking Salaam um, little poster. So no faces will be shown and I can keep it anonymous. But is there anything that's coming up for anyone? Anyone want to say anything or anyone want to tell me about their week and how they've been doing with them, um, with social media, and with petrol? I'd like to open it up to you ladies. You can unmute yourselves, I hope. Or if you can't, then just pop your hand up and I'll unmute you. Okay, so Alec and Sarah, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> 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 you know this week with the whole petrol thing um there's been a couple of moments because I, I rely on my car especially to get to work it's 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 a 30 minute drive or else it's going to be two trains and a bus with my three-year-old daughter to take her to nursery so um there's been a couple of times where I, I was running really low and and when I would join the queues um to fill up my petrol um either one ran out and the other one the actual light on the petrol came on um and <laughs> so i just did a u-turn and came home and so i was too scared because the queue was so long but subhanallah um allah I, I was panicked a little bit that day but allah made it so easy for me to the extent where my my brother who um works for aa he managed to fill up his tank and had a, a like um what do you call it? Those yeah. tanks. Yeah. yeah, he managed to. So he filled up his van at the same time, filled up uh, a tank, bought it at home, and was thinking of me. So <laughs> I managed to. I, I didn't without even moving from you know the car from my home, bought it to me and filled, kind of filled up my car. So yeah. it's just moments like that that it just when you're in the midst of like, oh my god, what am I going to do? How am I going to get to work tomorrow? <laughs> I have to leave about two hours before before you know usual. Um, journey time that Allah just makes it a way out and make things easy and then there's um ayah in surah talaq so if you fear Allah Allah will make a way out for you in any circumstance in any in any kind of situation and it's just kind of having that trust that um, I'm not gonna lie I did panic a little bit but in the back of my mind I was thinking you know what alhamdulillah khair I kind of mentally started preparing myself to, uh, you know, start, you know, the journey for the next day to work. If it's going to be two drains and a bus, it is what it is. I just have to, you know, get up at five o'clock. I'll stay up after Fajr and just kind of leave really early. But Allah just made that kind of so easy. And I just, I, after I prayed Ashaya, I, would, I couldn't get up from Sujda because I was just in those moments of just shukr, of just like Alhamdulillah. It's just so much ease just comes in those moments where, you're not quite sure what's going to happen. So um, I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> oh, Hamza, just I for sharing because that is such a beautiful articulation of who knew that, you know, a tank of petrol could instill so much gratitude, so much, you know, um, sugar in your, in your salah. And again, you know, petrol, when we just think, who ever thought that we'd be worried about it? Who ever thought that we would be, you know, um, queuing up and worrying about that little that little dot and how we go through life not doing that for ourselves so jazakla khair and heba that is such a beautiful example of when we you know when we plan like i said he is the best of planners and there is nothing that he can't do i mean he created the world he created everything in it i think you know a bit petrol a bit diesel is not out of his remit but it is us being there opening our hearts and minds us getting creative us you know believing that whatever is going on there is there is a reason for it there is something to be learned there is something to be gained there is something where 
you know, there's an opportunity to give gratitude, to ask forgiveness, to, to remember him. And when we remember him, you know, when we take one step towards him, he takes 10 towards us. So it's not as if we're doing the lion's share. And, you know, that was just brilliant. So thank you so much. Um, before we end, is there anyone else that would like to say anything or any any reflections on today's sessions? Um, I will be opening up the WhatsApp group after I've um, uh, finished this session. Um, opening it up to if you would like to share any reflections on there. But is there anyone that's got anything that they'd like to say right now? Please don't be shy. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. Can you hear me properly? I can hear you. Miss Mina, how are you? Alhamdulillah. I've got my headphones on. I wasn't sure you can hear me properly. I that's can all. Hi. <laughs> it's really. Um, I really enjoyed listening to this. It really uh, was such a good comparison to make, like the way you said, the way we, our bodies compared to the car, it needs energy, it needs fuel, it needs maintenance. And um, I just found that the heart really does need maintenance. And um, just the way we take so much care of making sure everything's running smoothly, we forget the most important thing, that's ourselves. If we need to be able to function smoothly, and I thought, subhanAllah, it's so, so true. I've gone through so many experiences where I've been um, feeling sleepy driving the car, and my husband used to always say to me, you know, you should really, really make sure that you get rest before you drive. It's, you know, it can become very dangerous. And I thought, and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, it's so true. I go to some, I know, I'm, I'm having to be able to, look after all my children and only by making sure that I'm taking care of myself first and this is actually so so important not just physically but spiritually and um, heart maintenance is so important and I know that from this recently I've studied something called um, how the sunnah of the prophet Salaam was that he used to have something called weird weird is like when you allocate certain portions of the day to make sure that you are um, spiritually nourishing yourself and the, the scholar spoke about it in such a detailed way the, how they divided the sections of the night and the day to make sure they get the portion of worship in so that they are spiritually nourished and um, it was a habitual thing something they had to do daily and um, it's um, really really I just found it so interesting the way you we made that comparison with the car and the human body and I just saw it linked it physically and spiritually as well so yeah oh, that's 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 that is amazing thank you thank you so much for articulating that as articulating what you've said as well because yeah. there is there is there is a time thing Asmanu has created the day the night the timing the the, yeah. the you know he's created an opportunity for us to do everything that we need to do to be successful in this life in totality of our spirituality our psychology and our physical um, being that we optimally live a life here that will get us to the optimum place in the hereafter so when people say you know i don't have time there is time it is prioritizing what you do it, yeah yeah and yeah the that's good. It's, subhanallah that is you know, that's essentially it's the it's the foundation of everything. So Jazakallah for your beautiful reflections. Thank you so much. Thank you. Barakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu sister. How are you? I'm okay. Alhamdulillah, I've taken my supplements. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just munching on a green apple. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I just wanted to quickly um I was just wanted to quickly um add in, I know it's uh, getting late about the WhatsApp, I, I sort of heard um, about the, uh, um, you know, the WhatsApp, as you was mentioning, yeah. um, it affected me. Um, the reason being is I work with the community a lot. So um, I've been trained, our team, we've been trained to do the ghusl of the mayat. So whenever I'm needed at the masjid, I'm on standby. So say they ring me today, like say nine, 10 o'clock in the evening or give me a WhatsApp message that you've got to be at this message to wash a dead body. It's like, to me, that's important. Because, mm. like, if somebody wasn't available, they're self-isolating or not, not that, you know, we would be, would just, you know, there'll be another volunteer like myself or another person. So that's number one. You know, that, you know, as a 
I do that voluntarily, alhamdulillah. And another one is that I'm a student. Um, I'm doing GCSE Arabic, so I need to see if my teacher is available and just to confirm the date and time if we're actually going to carry on with the session. Another one is I'm a teacher assistant at a madrasa, so I need to be notified um, about things, classroom, teachers, students, you know, mm -hmm. curriculum. So, <laughs> and I'm a carer as well. So WhatsApp is really important to me. <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of affected me because we need to be in the know, isn't it? And plan our week. Absolutely. And something yeah. that just came up was, what do you do in the absence of that when it is out of your control? There is, there is like, the, like the pandemic hit. People in school, we had to yeah. do it differently. We couldn't be, you know, we could, they couldn't be in school. We couldn't be in the hospitals. You couldn't. I'm sure that the everything that yeah. you just um, that you've just described was affected in a certain way in the pandemic. Mm. You couldn't do what you would have done ordinarily. And when yeah. it comes to the expectation of how things should be, you know, that we should be able to be in touch with people, that I should be, you know, contactable, that I should be able to contact my teachers. And when the reality came down to it, when you weren't, it's. How do you navigate that bit between what you think should be happening and what you, you know, what is actually happening? And although WhatsApp, you know, in its in essence, neutral, neutral, it's a messaging service. What you've just described is the way in which that messaging service helps you do mm. it is a forum, is a medium for you to be able to do the work that you do but it's not the yeah. only forum. I understand fully about the, you know, about the, um, the standby. So let's just say mm. it happened again. Have you got any kind of backup now? I mean, would you revert to normal text message or email or? Yeah, I don't know. a phone call. Or phone call. Phone Absolutely. call. The old star phone call, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. again, it is, it is then really yeah. thinking about what has this shown you? What yes. can you do? Because it wasn't, you know, nothing happens apart from the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we are learning lessons of life through social media sites stopping, through shortages of petrol, through the pandemic, you know, it's because we're in a space to see them. Because we could be at home, you know, smashing our phones thinking, why is this not happening? You know, why is it? What's going on? You know, the world's stopped or it shouldn't be like this. Or do you get creative? And see what you can do but jazakallah khair and thank you so much and i pray that you know nothing um was halted that you weren't <laughs> during that time or that you managed to do whatever it was that you needed to do i pray inshallah i do i was just being patient and i thought you know i just leave it up to allah and i just read uh yeah I'll leave it up to Allah because Allah is going to deal with our affairs, inshallah. Do not leave me to my own self, self. in a moment. And yes, in the blink of an eye, yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah, when, you know, when things aren't going your way and you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is a beautiful opportunity to do it because, you know, you could have done anything else. You could have thrown your phone against the wall, but you didn't. You decided to do something else and you left it with Allah, which is where it was yeah. anyway. All yeah. But Jazakallah Khairan for that. Thank you so much. Barakallah Fik. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Walaikum Salaam. Right, ladies, is there got time for one more before we uh, pop off? Sister Salma, you've unmuted yourself. Asalaamu Alaikum. Walaikum Salaam, sister, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but then uh, something came up when somebody mentioned about sleeping, like sleeping while they were driving yeah uh, funnily enough we had a um i had a talk with somebody um yesterday evening i think it was yeah and they were saying that they went into thinking mode while driving so you know like we say trance mm -hmm. so literally because she didn't give herself or she doesn't give herself any time during the day or the evening where she is putting everything down just to give herself that 10 15 minutes for her right. to connect with her thoughts with her emotions and i can't instill how important that is honestly yeah especially when you're going through something so tragic or 
something's happened and you haven't linked in with your emotions, it's so, so important to do so. Um, because you're doing it then at a time where it's unsafe. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you shouldn't be um, or when um, you should be consciously doing what you're doing. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, we haven't got time. And like you said, sister, earlier, we've got 24 hours in a day. We only sleep for, what, six to eight hours. The rest of them are hours. Um, for work, for us, for family. So it's just a matter of, like you said, prioritizing that time. And me time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever you get. Just cry it out, write it down. Give yourself that time. It's so, so important. Um, the way the sister was describing it actually <laughs> gave me goosebumps. And I was like, whoa, you're doing a 25-minute drive on the motorway. And all that time, all you're doing is thinking. And I was like, no way, that's not, that can't be right. You can't do that. Subhanallah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, um, she's just been through a bereavement as well. And you can imagine what kind of thoughts were going through her head so it was just amazing that so yeah because our sister brought it up I just thought I'd add a bit onto that that is real and it can happen and Allah Nakira something really bad happens or you know you know what I mean uh, mazallah for that but yeah alhamdulillah alhamdulillah for everything and like you said building resilience knowing that there are alternatives going back to the 90s and making that phone call going knocking on somebody's door see if they're okay if they're not picking up on whatsapp yeah <laughs> um it all be a norm. It should be something that we should be able to do. Uh, but we're so wrapped up in this social media world um, that, yeah, something like this would throw us off. Um, and it was only for, what, five hours, I think? Um, six hours, I think it was. The world stopped spinning for about that. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. And it was like, uh, my mum usually rings me on WhatsApp. It's like, oh, I can't get through. So then I rang her the other way because I have minutes and I'm in love. But um, that's the only really time I use it or when I'm advertising for our businesses mm -hmm. but other than that it's not really like you know be all end all for some um, but yeah then again like I said become resilient inshallah but yeah beautiful session inshallah I think I'll be joining more at this rate <laughs> oh, love, love, and I loved everything you said it really did um, it did encompass what we here at Sister Seeking Salam um, do and it's this space for for that you know um to just be to to get out what's going on in your mind to really have a space to work things out in a way that you might not um have had a chance to before and when you were talking about the sister using that as thinking time it was almost like she was an autopilot it was you know driving but not being in the car in her mind and what like her body was in the car but her mind mm. was elsewhere and absolutely so and when she was describing it I was like going back to years before when I used to be like that alhamdulillah over time like you said you learn and you build yourself and um, things happen and things happen for the best but for some people it's still the same mm -hmm. Yep. It's still, they're on autopilot, they're, they're up at a certain time, they're getting the kids ready and then they're going to work themselves and they're coming back, they're eating, sleeping, whatever. Um, and it is, the way she was just, it was completely auto autopilot. And you could, you could tell that whatever, whatever they were doing was unconscious. It wasn't, she was just like. Not being present. Doing it. Yeah, she was just doing it. Yeah. And I was like, well, do you enjoy anything that you do? Or do you enjoy the company that you're with? Mm -hmm. not, well, I don't, I don't realise it sometimes. And and I thought that has got to be probably, and in the nicest possible way, because I've got absolutely no judgment towards the sister. But it's one of the saddest things I've, I've heard because Subhanallah, mm. this life is so beautiful. There are so many opportunities that if we were to just live on autopilot, what would we miss? And actually, things like the WhatsApp crisis, the petrol crisis, the pandemic are mm. jolting us out of that autopilot and telling us, no, things aren't just the way that we expect. How no. are we going to deal with it? And we have the choice. We either, mm. you know, go back mm. to those innate um, gifts that we all have 
or we, you know, we don't accept it. And when we're not in a level of acceptance, we can't be in a level of possibility thinking. We're just going to be swimming around how rubbish things are and staying stuck. But when we can see, okay, what is it that, you know, I can do here? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to tell me? What can I learn? What can I do? What can I, you know, in the absence of being able to do anything, you know, making dua. Yeah. Like yeah. My sister was making the dua, um, don't leave me to myself for even a blink of an eye. It's Absolutely. Yeah, and in, indeed, and it's like, and I think what um, we've gone, we, we've come into a world of women empowerment, alhamdulillah, which is fair enough. But I think what we've done also is we've switched off as women. In what way? In what way? Emotionally, emotionally, sister, because I think emotionally we are stronger than men. That this is not just mm -hmm. speaking as a woman. I think scientifically it is proven that we are emotionally stronger than men. We are more emotionally resilient than men. I mean, if you look at our own grandmothers and mothers and alhamdulillah, the things that they went through and how resilient they become. Now, my personal coach, believe it or not, guys, is my mom. <laughs> alhamdulillah, honestly, like the things, I mean, I've been through thick and thin and my mom has as well. And She's always been my personal coach. And it was them that made me realize that you are human. You are um, prone to emotions. And all you've got to do is acknowledge them and realize that life is a roller coaster. It's not going to be plain sailing. It's never going to be plain sailing. And accept that you have these emotions. And don't be fearful of expressing them. I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of things. I think the one thing I find as well working with women is that they do switch off their emotions and it's only when you're talking to them one-to-one -one that you realise that it's all bottled up. Um, and we, don't, we don't express them as openly as they used to maybe do in at one time. I, I think we see it as shame, shameful maybe, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't understand why uh, we can't express ourselves. If we are feeling emotional, I mean, I don't mean like go and bawl your eyes out <laughs> in front of somebody and make a show of things, but I just think we should be able to comfortably, um, you know, acknowledge our emotions. I think that the um, there are forums like this and there is more awareness now. And everything you said, subhanAllah, we, we have access to the the foundation of, of, of who we are, the foundation of what makes us human, the foundation of how we navigate this life. And um, again, for anyone who's heard any of the um, the stuff that we talk about, and um, again, an analogy I love to use is that life is like the sea, and we you know we're little boats bobbing along the sea. So you know the stuff that happens, we we we. We, we, you know, we bob along, we are on the sea, we're traversing it, we're navigating it. And, you know, we, we go through life thinking that it's just, this is how it is, you know, almost like that's what life is like. And we're, we've got no choice but to be bobbing along. But each and every one of us has a little sail. And when we pop that sail up, we get to choose how we navigate the sea. We're all in this life, but we have the, the ability to choose how we focus our emotions our thinking our behavior our actions but it all mm. comes down to who we really are and i could talk about this and i'm sure you could probably all night long <laughs> but really it's the past tense subhanallah and uh, oh, so sorry well I hope please don't apologize Jazakla, for, you know yeah. for everyone to have um to have kept on um as long as you ladies have and i um wanted to remind everyone that Sister Seeking Salam is back. We are going to have two sessions a week. Um, a different coach will be taking each of the sessions. And I thank each and every one of you for honouring honouring, um, honouring this time with me and choosing to be here with me this evening. Sister Rosina, I think um, we've popped a message. I just want to quickly read that out. Definitely agree, sisters, inshallah. Um, highlights how important it is for us to make time for ourselves absolutely because if we're not fueling ourselves then 
what have we got to give to everyone else? If our cup is not filled with all of the good stuff that keeps us ticking over, you know, we'll turn into someone needing the AA, you know, for our kids. We'll need our kids to be dragging us up or our husbands to be towing us or our families to be, you know, coming to the rescue. But when we when we look after ourselves, when we our when we acknowledge the amana that is our psychology, our spirituality, our physiology, and we take care and nourish and nurture us, you know, as prescribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we can turn even, you know, self-care, essential self-care, true self-care, self-care of who, who we really are, into an act of ibadah. Because we're doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are taking care of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we are too. We're creations. You know, we, we worry about looking after our kids and our husbands and our families and our, you know, colleagues and our community. You know, but we, we need to take care of ourselves first and foremost. Because then that's what we've got to give out to everyone else. If our cup is full of love, mercy, kindness and compassion, that's exactly what we've got to pour into other people's tanks. So... On that note, I would like to thank each and every one of you, Jazakla Karen, for your time. And I, um, oh, I'm just for a second, something's come up. Um, yes, I would like to um, thank everyone for being here this evening. And inshallah, we will see you again on another Sister Seeking Salam session. But for now, Jazakla Karen and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.